Hello everybody and welcome to a new video. So a couple of days ago I did a poll on my Instagram asking a simple question, Dimo Borger? And the two options he had was hell yes or hell no. And surprisingly 80% of the people that voted said hell yes. And I am glad to see that. And then right after that I did a second poll in which I asked which one do you like better? Old Dimo Borger or the new Dimo Borger? And that came out 95 to 5%. That's crazy. But I gotta tell you, I am surprised because it should have been 100% to zero. Okay, let's talk about Dimo Borgir for a little bit. First of all, it's supposedly pronounced Dimo Borgir, not Demon Burger. So yeah, these guys have been around since the 90s, but they're actually considered to be in the second wave of black metal. When they came into the mix, it was already acceptable to have a keyboard player in the band because the almighty emperor had done that before. So yeah, ever since 1995, they came out with nine studio albums. Or 10, that's debatable, we'll talk about that in a second. But before we get to that, make sure you destroy the like button, you drop me a comment, and you subscribe to this channel like a man if you haven't yet. Okay, so let's get to the rise and fall of Dimo Borgir. So the first album they came out with was For All Tid. And it was a really cool and dark sounding album. For All Tid actually means for all time. And it's recorded entirely in Norwegian. And they did that because they wanted to remain a cult band. A year later, in 96, they came out with this album here, Stormblast. This guy actually featured a lot of keyboard. It's a really, really good album. It's very dark and raw sounding. Again, it was recorded in Norwegian. But that actually adds to the epic of the album. Some really great piano pieces were included there, including my favorite, which is the intro to the first song in the album, at least Erzvunet N, or something to that extent. Okay, so a year after that, everything changed. They came up with this baby right here. Probably my favorite album by them. Enthroned Darkness Triumphant. Great title. Okay, so what changed? First of all, this album was recorded in English. There were actually a lot of lineup changes as well. The sound production was way better. This album actually sounded a lot better because it was their first album to be recorded and produced by Nuclear Blast. It also started the five album tradition of three word album titles. You can definitely see that this guy has taken a beating because I used to take this to high school all the time. I got this puppy back in high school in 2002 and I bought it online. It was actually one of my first online purchases. And I remember having an argument with my mom because she got it in the mail and she opened it up and she saw the cover for this band and she was not pleased with it. And then she went down the track list and she saw classics like The Morning Palace or Torment of Christian Souls. And yeah, she was not happy about that. And mind you, at this point I was into Ozzy and Black Sabbath, Kiss, Motorhead, Jules Priest, and she never even flinched. She was okay with it because she knew the rock culture. In fact, she actually liked bands like Pink Floyd, Queen, Metallica, Scorpions and so on. But yeah, she was not ready for black metal. And this is where it really pains me to make a video like this. Because Zemo Borgir was one of the first two black metal bands I've ever listened to. In fact, I remember back then, in the days before YouTube and Spotify and Apple Music, I would sit there on my dial-up and try to download music. And it would actually take days for you to download a music video. And finally, I got the chance to watch the Morning Palace video. And it was just awesome. It was just so raw and dark. It was probably the first black metal song I really loved. So yeah, after listening to this album many, many times, I came up with three things that were really important that changed in this album. First of all, like I said before, it was actually recorded and produced by Nuclear Blast, so they had more budget and a better sounding record. Number two, they switched from Norwegian to English, so that alone made them a lot more mainstream. And number three, if you listen to it carefully, Shagrath changes his vocal technique from a very raw and raspy voice to a more throaty and overdriven voice. 
that is probably a lot easier to achieve and is less demanding on his vocal cords. In fact, from then on, he's never switched back. Okay, so right after that classic album, they came up with Spiritual Dark Dimensions, which is a cool album, but it's probably my least favorite from this period. It came out in 1999, and it's definitely an in-between album, if you know what I mean. You could definitely see that they were trying to go somewhere else, but they weren't quite there yet. So then what happened to Dimo Borgir? This happened. Puritanical Euphoric Misanthropia. More lineup changes. Okay, so what's wrong with this album? Probably nothing. It is a great sounding album. This is to Dimo Borgir what Injustice for All is to Metallica. It's the album that actually put them in the map. I mean, In Throne Darkness Triumphant was a great album, and it actually got them to tour with Dissection, which was already established black metal band. But this album proved that Dimo Borgir could actually hold their own. It's got some really fast songs, courtesy of their new drummer, Nicholas Barker. <laughs> And it's got some really commercially oriented songs, such as Puritania, which has definitely got an industrial vibe to it. But a cool song nevertheless. The high points on this album, Blessings Upon the Throne of Tyranny, Symposium, and Puritania is a must. Okay, so right after the success of that album, they actually became bigger and more orchestra oriented. They definitely had a more commercial approach to this album. You can definitely tell as far as the songwriting goes, the aesthetics of the album, and even the lyrical content. I actually bought this album when it came out in 2003, but I gave it away as a gift because it was like a special edition with a cardboard box and everything. So I just bought it again, because I felt like it's an album that I should definitely have. This is the album that blew up for them. I remember before the CD came out, they came out with a video for Progenies of the Great Apocalypse, and we were all psyched to get the album. At this point, we already had broadband, so it didn't take days anymore for you to download a music video. It would actually take maybe about two hours tops. And since one of my best friends already had this album, I knew what I was in for. So yeah, this is Dimo Borgir's Black Album. Just like the Black Album, it's still a great album, but it was a turning point in their career. So in comes 2005, and they come out with a new all album. They actually re-released Stormblast, but this time they stripped all of the keyboards out of the album. They had a way better production sound-wise, and they translated all the songs to English. I don't know how you guys feel about that, I don't even consider it a new album. That's why I said they came out with 9 albums at the beginning of the video, not 10 like most people say, but that to me was really a turn off. Even though it actually sounded a lot better, I didn't really like the fact that they re-released it. Oh, and by the way, they had to strip the keyboard parts out of it, because their keyboard player was actually not as creative as they thought he was. Check this out and you tell me. Okay, so at this point, they come out with a new album, in Sorte Diaboli in 2007. That was the last okay album in my opinion. Now at this point I was already out of high school, I was playing with my band constantly and I didn't listen to music as much as I did before. But I gotta tell you, I could not really get into this album as much as the previous albums. It wasn't really bad, it was just different. I couldn't really hear any of the classic Dimo Borgir in it, so I kinda lost the interest in them. In 2010, Abracahabra comes out, at which point I was done. The aesthetics had changed drastically. The days of singing in Norwegian because you wanted to remain cold had been long gone and at this point, to me, they had really sold out. At this point, you could just type it in and watch the music video. So I did, but I was actually put off by it. And that was it for me. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, I realized they had actually come out with another album after that and it's called Ionian and much to my surprise, it actually came out in 2018, over two years ago. So yeah, I really just lost track of them, but I figured I'd give them another shot for all time's sake. So I did check out some of the songs, and I didn't care for them, and that actually drove me to make this video. So anyway, enough ranting for me. Let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about Demo Borgir, which is your favorite album, and if you'd like to see me do a full-on review on some of their albums. And of course, smash that like button, and make sure you subscribe to this channel like a man if you haven't yet. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, I will see you guys next time, but out. Metal on dudes.